Let's solve unit 10 artificial intelligence questions. Definitions of which term in the options organized into following four categories namely thinking humanly, thinking rationally, acting humanly, acting rationally. Which field is actually trying to mimic what humans do? It is artificial intelligence. Inside artificial intelligence, you have machine learning, deep learning, neural network. But this definition is about artificial intelligence. What is thinking humanly? It aims to model how humans think and make decisions. Thinking rationally means this approach focuses on logic and reasoning. Acting humanly seeks to create machines that exhibit behavior indistinguishable from human behavior. Acting rationally aims to develop systems that act to achieve the best possible outcome or when there is uncertainty, the best expected outcome. Option number 3. Artificial intelligence will be the right answer. Next question. Which one of the following is not related to the feed forward networks on the back propagation algorithm? Let's see about the functions given here. Boolean function. Neural networks can be used to approximate Boolean functions. A neural network can learn the logic of AND or NOT. So this is definitely in neural network that applies to feed forward networks. What about continuous functions? Neural networks are highly effective at approximating continuous functions. They can model complex relationships in continuous data. This is also related. What about arbitrary function? In theory, a sufficiently large and well-trained neural network can approximate any arbitrary function according to the universal approximation theorem. So even this function is involved in feed-forward network. So which is not related to feed-forward network here? Greedy function. Option number 4, greedy function will be the right answer. Greedy algorithms are a class of algorithms that make a series of choices each of which looks best at the moment but they are not a characteristics of neural network training. Whichever is best for that moment that is going to be selected. How will you train neural networks without any logic or without any reasoning? You should have some kind of functions like boolean or some kind of approximation functions to handle the data when they are passed through neural networks. So definitely greedy algorithms will not be a part of neural networks here. That's why we are marking greedy function as the right answer. They are asking which is not related to the feed forward networks. When it is back propagation, it means some correction is going to happen there. Next question, the mathematical notation to describe logical entailment of a sentence Alpha entails another sentence beta is. Alpha should be present in the LHS part and beta should be present in the RHS part. If that is the case, 3 and 4 are ruled out. What is this particular symbol? Alpha is a subset to beta. This cannot be definitely the notation for entailment here. So we can also rule out 2. Option number 1 will be the right answer. This will be the mathematical notation to describe logical entailment. What is this actually describing? The notation means that if alpha is true, then beta must also be true. It represents a logical entailment or implication where beta logically follows from alpha. Next question. Which of the following is not a component of the classic planning definition? So let's see about classic planning now. This typically involves the following components. Init, which gives the initial state of the system. Action, the set of actions that can be performed to transition between states. Goal, the desired state or set of states that the planning process aims to achieve. So we have init, action, goal. So which is not a component here? Option number 2, domain will be the right answer. If you take domain, you cannot restrict it to a particular state of a system. That's why domain is not a component in planning definition. Next question, what is the correct sequence of steps 
used by knowledge based designing let's take the first step choose task domain or world to represent this is b this step involves selecting the specific area or environment that the knowledge base will represent it defines the scope and boundaries of the knowledge base what will be the next step select atoms to represent propositions of interest this is c atoms or basic units of knowledge are selected to represent the specific propositions or facts that are of interest within the chosen domain the next step will be tell the system propositions that are true in the intended interpretation or axiomatizing in the domain the true propositions or axioms within the domain are communicated to the system these propositions form the foundational knowledge that the system uses for reasoning this is d next step will be ask questions about the intended interpretation this will be a questions are asked to clarify the meaning and interpretation of the knowledge that will be represented in the knowledge base let's take this in the context of propositional logic so that you can understand the steps in a better way this is just for telling you how this order happens let's take a domain in propositional logic domain of integers or domain of real numbers in that we have certain proposition statements so that can be taken as select atoms to represent propositions so this will be the next step after that we are going to say the system propositions that are true in the interpretation so here we are giving true or false value to the particular statement so the truth of the proposition statement is given here ask questions about the intended interpretation means after giving the intended interpretation you are asking questions over it if you are able to get this order b c d then definitely based on this particular interpretation they are going to raise some questions will be followed after d b c d a will be the right sequence option number 2 will be the right answer next question which of the following are correct for the neural network the training time depends upon the size of the network the training time of a neural network is influenced by various factors including the size of the network so a is definitely right what about b neural network can be simulated on the conventional computer neural networks can be simulated on conventional computers using software frameworks like tensorflow pytorch and keras however for larger and more complex neural networks specialized hardware like gpus and tpus gpus are graphics processing units and tpus are tensor processing units they can be used to accelerate the training process even though it can be simulated on conventional computers they say it will make use of some specialized hardware like gpus and tpus which is not present in the conventional computers so this is point a and this is point b this is fine but this is under question mark what about c neural networks mimic the same way as that of the human brains neural networks are inspired by the structure and function of the human brain no doubt but do you think it is doing the exact mimic i don't think so because based on the training neural network output accuracy can be improved when there is something to be improved you cannot say it is exactly doing what the human brain is doing so in that way i differ from c so let's see about d statement a neural network include feedback some type of neural networks exist particularly recurrent neural networks and feedback neural networks include feedback loops where the output of a layer is fed back into the network to know about recurrent neural networks and to see the feedback loop there is deep learning series in this channel and in that you have one of the videos having the content of recurrent neural networks but that video is available in tamil language but the content in the video is given in english to understand the structure or to see the diagram of that feedback loop you can definitely watch that video once this allows the network to maintain a form of memory and handle sequences of data so d is also 
ట్రూ ఫార్ ష్యూర్ యాజ్ పర్ ద అఫీషియల్ ఆన్సర్కి వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ విత్ ఆప్షన్ నంబర్ టూ ఏ సి అండ్ డి ఓన్లీ యాజ్ ద రైట్ ఆన్సర్ దో ఇట్ క్యాన్ బి సిమ్యులేటెడ్ డ్యూ టు సర్టైన్ స్పెషలైజ్డ్ హార్డ్వేర్ ఐ థింక్ దే హ్యావ్ రూల్డ్ అవుట్ దిస్ పర్టికులర్ బి స్టేట్మెంట్ యాజ్ ఇన్కరెక్ట్ ఫార్ న్యూరల్ నెట్వర్క్ So taking that into account we are actually ruling out option B and we are going right with option C I don't say that C is false it is trying to mimic the same way as human brains do but when there is a difference between the expected output and the actual output it is not still completely doing as humans is what I wanted to tell you next question the kind of symbols for basic syntactic elements of first order logic are constants are symbols that represent specific objects in the domain of discourse so constants are there predicates are symbols that represent properties or relations between objects in the domain predicate is there functions are symbols that represent mappings from a set of objects to another object within the domain function is also there a c and e only are included here option number 3 will be the right answer what about domain and temporal the domain refers to the set of objects over which the variables in the logic system range but it is not a symbol within the syntax itself that's why we are ruling out domain what about temporal temporal aspects relate to temporal logic which extends first order logic to include temporal operators but temporal is not a basic syntactic element in first order logic they say it extends but it is not basic so we are even excluding temporal next question match the list one with list two decision tree supervised learning artificial neural network instance based learning are provided in list one delta learning rule self organizing map c4.5 algorithm non linear regression algorithm are provided in list 2 the c4.5 algorithm is a well known algorithm used to generate decision trees a will be mapping to 3 a3 is available only in one option non linear regression is a method used in supervised learning to model the relationship between inputs and outputs d will be mapping to 4 the delta learning rule also known as the least mean squares rule is often used in the training of artificial neural networks to update the weights so we can map c to 1 what about self organizing maps they are a type of unsupervised learning algorithm used in instance based learning to produce a lower dimensional representation of the input space often used for clustering and visualization we can map d2 2 a3 b4 c1 d2 option number 3 will be the right answer with this we are completing unit 10 solutions